Hi, this is Rob McDougall with Zang Financial here with your weekly economic update. Today is Monday, October 9th. So last week we had four economic data points that were released. I'd have to say all four of them, we think, uh, relatively constructive for the economy and therefore for financial markets. So we'll go through them. Uh, last Monday was the IM, ISM Manufacturing Index. Now this index as the service index, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, are both scaled at 50. So anything above that means expansion, below means contraction, the lower the worse, the higher the better. So for the ISM Manufacturing Index, this index has been below 50 for 10 months consecutive. Make it 11. So that simply means uh, that we are sort of in a manufacturing recession. The economy's doing fine, we'll hit those numbers. Uh, but this metric has been under 50, suggesting manufacturing contraction. However, we did get the September number that came in better than expected. Expectation was 47.8%. It came in at 49.0%. So that was positive. Secondly, ISM services, same setup. 50 is the demarcation line. The ISM services index came in at 53.6, essentially where the consensus was and solidly above the 50 uh, demarcation line. On Friday then, we got non-farm payrolls, average hourly earnings, and the non-farm payrolls by far was the biggest surprise and upside surprise of the week. The expectations were we were going to add about 158,000 jobs in September. The actual number was 336,000, far better than expected. And the prior two months were also uh, revised upwardly. So in terms of job creation, very solid showing. And uh, I have to say year to date, the numbers have been impressive. Uh, average hourly earnings, you, you can take this one either way. Um, if it's too high, it'd be good for consumers, but bad for inflation, too low bad for consumers, but good for inflation. This came in at a positive 0.2% month over month for the month of September. Expectations were it was going to be a little bit higher at 0.3%, but coming in at 0.2%, I have to say, that's a positive for inflation. And what we are looking for, again, um, economic growth, yes, but inflationary pressures are um, falling. And so, I would say the average hourly earnings is a decent data point in that direction. So uh, based on all that last week, the expectation for a Fed rate increase. November 1st is the next FOMC meeting release date. Uh, the expectations continue to be overwhelming. There will be no increase at this meeting. Uh, the odds are now 81%, really uh, unchanged from the week before. And then the expectation by the end of the year for the uh, December meeting, which is December 13th, uh, pretty much um, um, expected there'll be no change. It's 66% of no change by the end of the year. So although we have the Federal Reserve saying they're going to raise one more time, they may, the financial markets really don't believe it. Uh, in terms of inflation and inflation expectations, we're going to talk about the fact that CPI is coming up this week for the reading for September. But uh, investor inflation expectations based on the 10-year break-even, still very low at a 2.31% expectation for the next 10 years. Now, we're going to throw a chart in here today about the yield curve. We haven't talked about this much. In fact, we rarely talk about it. Investors, clients do ask about it, but we don't often mention it. Um, the yield curve and the inversion and the slope of the yield curve historically had been suggested it was a very strong relationship between economic growth and that shape of the yield curve. And so it had always been understood that if the yield curve inverted such that the two-year yield was above the 10, we were likely heading to a recession. Now, we have argued during our client meetings, our client events, even on podcasts, that that relationship has broken down over the years, so the predictive value is very low for this metric. But just want to point out the fact that um, the tenure now, the yield has come up so much that the inversion now is quite modest. So at the end of July, July 26, the two-year yield was a 103, 103 basis points higher than the tenure. As of Friday, that relationship changed a little bit. So now the tenure is only 29 basis points. 
the two years only 29 basis points higher than the 10 year, largely because the yield on the 10 year has come up. In fact, last week, the yield on the 10 year U.S. Treasury was up 20 basis points. So we've talked about this a lot in separate client meetings, but also in the client events that we're doing now. We did a couple here in Portage two weeks ago. Last week, we did our webinar on it, talking about the fact that the U.S. government has so much money that has to be financed over the next 12 months, 7.6 trillion of government treasuries uh, that are coming up for that are maturing, plus the deficit that we have to finance. That's going to put a lot of pressure, we think, on long-term rates. Just another reason why, at this point in the cycle, we are not moving out on the interest rate sensitivity scale, keeping most of our debt positions uh, on the short-term level. So last week, uh, given the economic data that we saw, how did the markets react? Uh, if you take a look at the equity markets mixed, the only thing that worked last week here in the U.S., large cap growth. It's sort of the theme for the year. It bounces back and forth any given week. But last week, large cap growth worked and certainly value and small cap did not. So for the week, S&P 500 up 0.5%. But within that, growth was up 0.75%, value down 1.72%. Also, large cap last week up 83 basis points, small cap down 2.03%. So on a year-to-date basis now, S&P 500, as of Friday, was up 13.66%, dramatically outpacing that of international markets. So the MSCI World, we always use for comparison, MSCI World, XUS, year-to-date, that's up 2.16%. So that's 11.5% higher for the S&P 500. So again, domestic, dramatically outperforming international. China, again, lagging, did poorly last week, down 1.8%. Year-to-date, China down 10.9%. So fixed income, I already sort of prefaced it by telling you the 10-year yield last year was up, last week was up 20 basis points. Uh, the two-year was up only two. Uh, the way that worked out for the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index, that was down 1.7% last week. And the long-term government bond, about 20-year duration, that was down 3.77%. So year-to-date now, the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index down 2.36%. And that Bloomberg U.S. Long Government Bond Index that I mentioned, down nearly 12% on a year-to-date basis. So let's take a look at the economic data points that are coming up this week. Uh, this will be a very big week. Huge focus on inflation, as we talk about every week. Uh, but coming up on Wednesday, we have the PPI and the core PPI. PPI, Producer Price Index, core PPI for September. Uh, expectations is the PPI will come in at a positive 0.3% month over month. And for the month of August, that was a positive 07 but expected to drop down to a 0.3% uh, increase. And the core CPI, uh, plus 0.3%. 2%, the same as in August. On Thursday, we get the consumer price index, the CPI. That is expected to come in at 0.3% for September. In August, it was up 0.6%, and the core CPI is expected to come in at 0.3%, same as it was in August. Now, for both of these metrics, PPI, CPI, we'll be a little bit surprised if they come in at these numbers. Again, we've been just Following what's happened with energy prices, you look at the price uh, a barrel of oil, it's up 37% over its lows back in June. So we, we kind of think there's upside potential here on these CPI and PPI numbers. Hopefully we're wrong from an inflation standpoint, uh, but they, um, they look a little bit low to us, but we'll see. Uh, last thing for this week, the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment uh, Index will be coming in. Last month, it was at 68.1. The expectation is a slight decrease down to 67.5. So that's it for the preview for this week and for our total economic recap. Thank you very much for attending. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.